Hey, this program does not reflect the views of Media Network of Waterford. Tell you the truth, I don't even know if we have permission to be doing it. We don't. Look, if you have a problem with the show, feel free to contact me, <laughs> a clown. Or you can contact me, comedian Luis Valencia. But I, I owe too many people money, so I don't really answer my phone all the time. So just leave a message after the beep. The wind's out in the crowd. You'll find out that he's loud. He's dressed in all black and white. He's one hell of a sight. Uh, he's a disgruntled clown. And he's fooling around. Good evening. Welcome to the Disgruntled Clown Show. I'm here with my good buddy, comedian Luis Valencia. How you doing? How you doing? Well, we got a great show lined up tonight. Yeah. We do, man. We got, got a great comedian that's actually gonna be a new guy. I mean, never been never been in, never been on TV show no, before. Oh, first TV so, yeah. appearance. All first right. TV appearance, which here is we go. cool. Because that's one of those when he makes it big, we can call him and say, Hey. Yeah, remember us? Remember us? And he's gonna yeah. be like, Hello? Yeah, who is Hello? this again? Uh, wow, sorry, on my I, don't, phone. I don't know no Mexican, sorry. <laughs> you know, always happens. And he probably would throw the Mexican thing in there. Probably. Like, yo, I get it. That's it. You <laughs> see, you're wearing a new shirt. Yeah, man, I thought it'd go a little fancy. That, you know, that, try to spend a little. That's, that's kind of nice. Yeah, it's not bad. I can't wait to bring it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it looks good. Too, it's too pricey it, it, for my blood. Too pricey? Yeah, a little bit. It, oh, it's one of them designer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What designer? A, a Gucci. You know, no big deal. Yeah. yeah. So. And so uh, it's part of their Sonoma collection. All right, cool. Yeah, you're gonna take Don't it back, it. aren't you? Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> way, way out of our pay grade. Yeah, but it looks nice. Thank you, I appreciate it. I feel good. Hey, I got my shot. Got my shot. Got, oh yeah, got, you, got one. How you feeling? I'm feeling good. You, you know, feeling good. Um, they say the second one's the one that gets you good. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. That's coming up here. Well, make sure you drink a lot of fluids. You know, That's it. take care hey, of yourself. You know, hey. Take care You're of yourself. Good. And uh, everything else going good? Anything going on with you? I'm just excited for this weather. You know, it's yeah, good. Oh, man, it's been beautiful. Things are week. opening up. Like, it's starting to look yeah. nice again. Yeah, it is looking good. Well, okay, so um, I guess we might as well get this show started. Yeah, what you got going on? Well, you know, I got a problem. Yeah, you always do. I, you know, so I'm going to go ahead and have to bring it up. Well, let's get into it. All right. Pierce Morgan. Listen to me. You need to shut the hell up. Okay? You want to talk about freedom of speech and all that? You have no clue what it takes to maintain a country that has freedom of speech. That means you ought to hear the side of somebody that you don't like and hear their view and their impression about something, and you need to just accept it. Now, you shoot off your mouth at people all the time and raise hell. And yes, you trash the princess or whatever you want to call her, Harry's wife. Okay. You know, Markle. Merkel. Is her name Merkel? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Yep. Yeah, he hauls off and trashes her constantly. But when someone gives you an opposing view, you get up like some damn British twat and you haul off and walk off stage of your own show. Look here. Don't be using freedom of speech, okay? You don't know what it takes. 200 and some years ago, my forefathers decided they wanted freedom of speech. And what did they do? At that time, they were under law of a king and a queen, okay? And they packed up and they moved to the Americas, all right? And then they did what they had to do. Freedom of speech does not come where you just use it whenever it fits your need, all right? I'm telling you that. Now, this whole little thing... Cheryl Underwood, with this thing with Ozzy's wife, Sharon Osborne. Let me tell you something. Cheryl, I've always respected you, okay, as a comedian and as a person. Now, I realize you're a black woman. That's fine. And it's sensitive, okay, to the all racial stuff going on. But let me tell you something. Get off the stupid sensitivity, all right? At least hear the whole story before you start whining and then attacking people about them being racist. Like Sharon defending her friend, Pierce Morgan, which, look, it's her friend. 
She decided to defend his 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 right to walk off stage and all that. That's fine. That's her prerogative. She's sitting her butt here in America too. So she's exercising her right of freedom of speech, which is fine. But you don't have the right, Cheryl Underwood, to haul off an attack without knowing the whole story. And to use the word she's racist or he's racist, let me explain something to all of you that haven't taken the time to find out the whole damn story before you ran your mouth. Pierce Morgan tried to date her. That's right. He was trying to get in bed with her. So he can't necessarily be a racist when he was trying to tap that ass. You can't haul off and and complain to him and call him a racist because he's just the guy who's been (laughs) been dumped. Because I hate to tell you this, the night she met Harry, she was out to dinner with Pierce Morgan and it wasn't going well, so she left. And then she went to another party and that's when she met Prince Harry. Get the whole story, people. Get the whole story and know the facts before you start pointing fingers and using the word racist on somebody. You want to be all insensitive and all that stuff? Look in the mirror at yourself. But what do I know? I'm just a clown. He's just a clown, man. But yeah, man, freedom of speech. You can say whatever you want. As long as it's funny. As long as it's funny. You know, it doesn't matter. You can say whatever you want in, in whatever language you want. You want it to be Espanol or Francais or, or Deutsch or Kenichiwa, whatever. You can say whatever you want in any language. Where'd you learn all those languages? I'm smarter than you think. I, apparently, I speak only two languages. English and redneck. Cool. Yeah. Or Southern, <laughs> however you want to put it. Yeah. Well, Interesting. Hey, hey, look, it's time for... Uh, it's time for the, we got the defenders of the freedom of speech. Yeah, that's, that's the people who actually really put it on the line every day to exercise so that I can exercise my right of the First Amendment freedom of speech. We acknowledge those people. If you know somebody you want to nominate to, feel free to go to our uh, website at www.thedisgruntledclownshow.com. Dot com. Yep, yeah. definitely. So who do we got this month? This month, we got a Marine. There you go. But he had Change a cool job. Yeah? What did he do? He actually was with the 21st 46th M1A1 Tank Division. Whoa. Yeah. Running he over was, cars He was a mechanic. Stuff? Yeah. All he was right. a mechanic. He got to drive them and, and fix them and repair them, move them around. And all Man, that. He was, stationed, he was stationed in Cuba and Iraq. In 1991 to 19, he served 1991 to 1995. Yeah, he's a uh, Marine, U.S. Marine, Russ Brown. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Russ Brown. Hey, so you might not know that he's also a stand-up comedian. That's right. That's the little surprise. Yeah. He actually, he actually dabbles in stand-up comedy. Yeah. Yeah, which is kind of cool. I when I read that about him, I was like, oh wow, yeah. cool. You know, comedians coming all walks That's of life. That's it. That's it. And he knows how to steal a tank and come after you. Yeah. So you better laugh. You better laugh at better him. Don't laugh. heckle him. No, yeah, Buy his merchandise. Him, no, no I'm, I'm sure he's kind of kind of good with weapons and stuff. Oh, uh, yeah. You, know? you can heckle him. That's up to you. Yeah, he's a Marine, you know. Yeah. Hey, we, we, got, we got coming up, uh, we got uh, comedian John Hauser here. Oh, yeah, coming yeah. to show you guys some comedy. That's it, definitely. Um, all right, then, uh, once again, we want to salute... Uh, Russ Brown. Appreciate it. For defending our right of freedom of speech. Hey, like I said, we got a great uh, show lined up. Uh, your headliner this evening, ladies and gentlemen, um, is uh, been doing comedy for only about eight years, but he's been doing it hard on the road all over the place. Uh, clubs, colleges, back rooms, bar mitzvahs. Um, yeah. Everywhere. Basements. Dick, at Dick and Jane's place. Outside. Yeah. Festivals. Barbecues. Yeah, birthday you know, parties. Wherever he could, you know. Um, I want y'all to give a warm welcome to uh, Mr. John Hauser. Well, thank you, Clown. It's so good to be here. Uh, I'll be honest, during the pandemic, I'm excited to be out doing anything right now, as I'm sure most of us are getting to that place. I tell you what I did. 
uh, during the pandemic. I've been learning new things. Uh, I learned, first of all, that I can grow this glorious uh, blonde hair that I've got here. Never had hair like this my whole life, and it's weird because when I was a kid, actually, up until just a few years ago, my hair was always very red, very bright red. And in fact, when I grow my beard, you can still kind of see like a mason ginger line here where everything from here on down is still very auburn, like all the way down to my hobbit feet. But the thing is, from here on up, as I've grown it out, I've learned that it's very blonde now, and it's just changed naturally. So I don't know what's going on, if I'm like a trans ginger, or what the situation there is, which is fine, I'll adjust, that's cool. Uh, but that's, I've learned that. Um, I've also learned, uh, I'm 43 years old and single, uh, never had a kid, I didn't learn that. But I learned during the pandemic that online dating has really changed a lot. Uh, the technology there is amazing, because I went on and got uh, an account at Match.com. And if you've never done this before, I really encourage you to do it. Because even if you're in a steady relationship, like go on there and create like a joint account. Not to do anything weird, but just to check out the technology they have. Because it's astounding. Uh, it's 2021. That technology is there too. And so I went on there and I created this profile, right? Put some witty uh, little sayings and got some, some nice photos. And I'm ready to take that profile out shopping or whatever they call it. And uh, believe it or not, you guys, like you might remember back in the 90s, they had this real helpful little paperclip guy back on uh, like Microsoft Word where you could just be staring at a blank sheet of, of, uh, on the computer screen and type one letter and he would come clippy out on his little bicycle and be like, hey there, John, looks like you're trying to write a resume. Would you like some help? You're like, hell yeah, Clippy, that's amazing, right? Like, in fact, why don't you go ahead and finish that resume out and uh, go to my orientation too, maybe take my first two weeks. I don't really feel like going back to work right now anyway. Well, he's over at Match.com now and I was astonished because I found a profile I liked and I'm getting ready to send that first message, which is still a little intimidating. So as I'm staring at that blank little message screen, here comes Clippy on his little bicycle out of nowhere. I'm like, oh my God, this is great. And sure enough, he's like, hey there, John. Looks like you're trying to lie to a woman. Would you like some help? I'm like, yes, this is amazing. <laughs> right? like, and uh, you know, I don't, now here's the thing, ladies. I don't want to make it sound like I'm a creep. Like I wouldn't actually lie to women to try to take advantage of them. There's other weird things that I do that are good enough. I don't need to do that. But the reality is when you first meet someone, especially when you're kind of attracted to them in that first meeting, you also shouldn't be totally honest with them either. And that's the problem that I have is I'm starting to tell these women things right off the bat that they have no business knowing. So I would love to have Clippy jump in there and like, you know, take the wheel for a minute. Especially two years ago, in fact, I was in Nashville, Tennessee, had a great show, and this very lovely young lady comes up uh, after the show, and she says, John, you know, my name's Katie, and I thought you were very funny, and I just want you to know that I think a funny man is very sexy. <laughs> and Katie, you know, Katie's giddy. You can tell by the look on her face, and what she didn't know was that her friends had already told me that Katie was really impressed, and that Katie was newly single, all right? So like, I know this is going on. So as the conversation kind of goes a little further, I know she's interested already. But then, as I said, this was a few years ago. So my hair wasn't as long. and She started to notice a little bit of a scar on my head. So now she's really getting excited. And she sees that. She goes, oh, were you, were you in a bar fight after a comedy show? Are you a sexy, dangerous, funny, sexy man? Right? She's really getting excited. And uh, I had her, I could have said anything at that point, but then that honesty thing kicked in, and I'm like, no, I stood up off the toilet too quickly, I just got a little blackheaded, or black, uh, black out and kind of hit my head on the way down, uh, <laughs> bleeding all over the, the, the linoleum there. I'll tell you what, if my mom hadn't have come uh, down to do some laundry at that very moment, I might have died. <laughs> all right, Katie, I'll see you later then. It's been nice talking to you. Uh, so Clippy would be good for me, and not even just with the dating. Like, I'll, I would love to have Clippy as just like a little virtual Jiminy Cricket. You know, like, like they have Google Home Assistants and things like that. You can get information on demand. I'd like to have a virtual life coach where Clippy could just pop out. I don't even want control over him. I just want him to pop up when he can sense I'm about to do something dumb, right? And again, would have loved to have him on that trip to Nashville because I do live in Michigan, and I love my legal recreational marijuana dispensaries. It's very easy, but not in Tennessee. So when you're on the road like that, I, you find yourself in a dark alley on a Saturday night trying to make a little purchase. And I would have loved to have Clippy pop out at that moment and be like, hey there, John. Looks like you're about to pay $200 for an ounce of oregano. Would you like some help? Like, yes. That's, that's very helpful, Clippy. Like, I'll give you 100. I'll give you 100. Come on, Clippy. Let's go smoke this oregano. But uh, maybe next year for Christmas. I don't know. 
The, uh, the other thing I mentioned, I was encouraged, I haven't done it yet, but as uh, I've been locked down, a lot of my friends have encouraged me to go and one of those ancestry DNA sites to kind of see what my, my DNA history and ancestry is, because I'm adopted. So it's actually, you know, not only am I redhead, I'm an adopted redhead. So, by the way, if anybody sees me at a show and wants to tell me a redheaded stepchild joke, uh, just don't. <laughs> Not because I'm offended, but because, like uh, the clown said, I've been doing this long enough. I swear to God, I've heard every single one. I'm just bored at this point. Please, please don't. I've heard it. I promise you. But the thing I don't get offended by is people that ask questions when they find out I'm adopted. Because that's why I like to bring it up in my act. I want people to ask questions, something different they don't know about, so I want them to learn a little. I feel that's a good idea. And the most common question I do get, actually, is people always ask me, John, when did you actually find out that you were adopted? That's a valid question, but the reality is is that I was only three months old when I was adopted, so I never actually found out. My parents were very open about it, so I just kind of always knew it wasn't a sit-you-down moment. And I actually have a sister who's four years older than me. Now, she's not adopted. She's a real child. So, uh, (laughs) obviously, she knew I was adopted, too. I just kind of showed up at the age of four out of nowhere, right? And so there was this weird dynamic where we always, I think my parents did the right thing and made the right call with being honest about that, but that also meant that my sister and I had that knowledge from a very young age. And anybody that has, pa- that has kids knows that little kids with knowledge are like little kids with active hand grenades. Like it's only a matter of time before they drop one of those in public, and then you're going to have to dive on it and just you know, contain the damage. So with my family, it was that adoption knowledge. And uh, what, when I was eight, in fact, it was the first time it came up. Uh, my, I was eight, and my sister was 12. And it was Christmas time. This was in the 80s. And we were at the mall. So in the 80s, at a mall, you could leave your kids alone in a crowded mall for a little while uh, without being worried. So my parents went to get some Christmas presents that were surprises. She left my sister and I alone for a while. And of course, as the 12-year-old older sister, as many of you probably are aware, her primary responsibility was looking out for the well-being and the safety of her 8-year-old younger brother. Pretty standard. And of course, as the 8-year-old younger brother, you also realize that my job was to make my 12-year-old sister lose her mind, (laughs) which I was able to, and this was a crowded mall at Christmas, folks, so when I recognized what was about to happen, like, I knew I had some talent, so I got really excited, right? This was a crowded mall at Christmas. This was like my Monday night football moment. So sure enough, as soon as my parents left, it only took me 90 seconds, 90 seconds, before this little 12-year-old girl brought an entire crowded mall at Christmas to a halt, just a dead stop, just, hey, hey, You knock it off right now. And if you don't, I'm going to have mom and dad take you back like the two brothers I had before you. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. Let's get a timeout on that one, right? Like, yeah, I uh, was not prepared for that particular defensive scheme Monday night, right? But the thing is, as embarrassed as I was, I learned that that information could be used as a weapon. So I kind of stored that in my mind. I'm like, a weapon, all right. And I kind of considered that the nuclear option that I would wait and take out at the you know, proper moment. So sure enough, about eight years later, I'm now in an argument. I'm 16 years old with my dad, as many teenage boys do. And I'm basically trying to stake my claim for man of the house territory, right? So I'm puffing my chest out. I'm ready to take over. And I'm just in this drawn out argument with dad, right? And I finally get to the point where I've had enough. And it pops in my mind. I say, now, now is the time for the nuclear option. So I pop my chest out. I look my dad square in the eye. And I say, you know what, dad? Dad. I don't know why I have to listen to you anyway. You're not even my real father. Yes, now I know there's no one in the audience, but I can still hear your gasps. Trust me, like that was awful. It was terrible, right? Like, and, and I felt terrible too. Like even 16-year-old me, like my brain, the moment I said it was like, oh, no, that was supposed to stay in here, you idiot, right? I'm terrified, never felt worse in my life. But I also have never been more impressed with my old man because he did not even blink. He just looks at me and he goes, well, of course I realize that, son. Why do you think we try so much harder with your older sister who's our real child? I'm like, okay, daddy, that's, uh, you've made your point. I'll just go to my room then, grounded two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, sounds good, sold. I like it. And and, and my favorite one, uh, actually, like I said, when I was younger, I had very bright red hair. So the, the thing about that is when you're a little kid with red hair, for whatever reason, Strangers seem obligated to come up and ask your parents in public where you got your red hair from, right? It's a very strange phenomenon. In fact, 
I'm convinced that the whole DNA search uh, program was started by parents of a redhead. They're like, you know, we should start charging people for this, right? And they used to do it to my parents all the time. And of course, my last name's Hauser, as many of you may know. That's a German name. There's no German going on here. And, uh, you know, my parents and sister, they have dark hair and souls and, you know, so like they asked my parents all the time. And so sure enough, my mom, she'd tell them I'm adopted. They'd get a little nervous. So she's like, all right, I'm going to make something up. And I think this is where my ability or lack thereof comes from because my mom's a very nice lady and she doesn't lie well either. But she decided I'm going to do this little white lie. So she had my sister and I out in the grocery store. My sister's five. I'm one. I'm in the little stroller. Mom's going through the checkout line, and sure enough, the young lady behind the counter sees me. She says, oh, my God, your son, he's so cute. He's a little carrot top. He's a bright red hair. He's adorable. Where does he get it from? My mom was all ready to go. She just whipped that little lie out. She's like, oh, well, he gets it from his father, who's at work right now. He's not with us. And everything was fine for a few seconds. So my five-year-old sister just looked up at my mom and goes, wait a minute, Mommy. You don't even know who his father is. <laughs> Yeah, I tell you what, I don't know if you've ever seen a five-year-old come out of their stroller to chest bump and high-five their one-year-old uh, one brother. But I can tell you this, if YouTube and cell phone cameras had been around in 1980, I'd already be famous. So thank you so much, you guys. Thank you to the clown. I've had a wonderful time. I hope you guys are doing great. Have a wonderful night. Hey, John. That was a good set, man. Well, yeah, thank you. Thank good you. Set. I appreciate it's good that. seeing you. Yeah. You as well, I've yeah. Seen you. Yeah, it's been it's a cool. while. It had too yeah. long. Really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, now, have you ever worked with Luis or met Luis before? Actually, yeah, we're, we're good friends, in fact. Uh, I guess you could kind of say we, we, we came up together in, in comedy. Yeah, we drove here together. Oh, yeah, yeah, we drove, yeah, that's, yeah, that's all he's willing to oh, admit, good I deal, guess. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I worked with him many times. He's he got a new shirt. <laughs> I know, it's yeah. better than I've ever seen him look. I'm, the I'm funny part is, during the, during the breaks we do, uh, he, uh, he wouldn't let me get near him with my drink. Oh, is he going to return it? Yeah. He's going to return it. <laughs> yeah, I can't, have you, look, I, can't, I can't have you ruining the tag. He's still got the tag. I was going to say, it I looks a little too it. pressed yeah. for that not to come straight from the store. Yeah, it looked, yeah, it looked too good. I just had that's, to grab it and wear it. Man. But you look good. Yeah, yeah it's That's sharp. all that matters, you know. Everybody, if you get a chance, um, if you think uh, Luis is, it looks nice, please go to the thedisgruntledclownshow.com uh, and uh, send us a message. You can email us very easily from there. Check out the new photos and the behind-the-scenes stuff. Um, and uh, check some of the old shows, too. And let us know what you think about Luis's attire and his <laughs> haircut and all. He's, uh, he's changing yeah. up and all that. I think you're just worried Border Patrol is going to show up. Hey, I got to look clean, you know what I'm saying? That's it. I got to look clean. Yeah. That just helps my case, you know? Right. Yeah. So, John, uh, you've got some... Show's coming up this month, I see. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. you're going to be over in uh, Grand Rapids? Yeah, I'm uh, for right now mostly Michigan stuff. So I've got on uh, April 20th, I've got a show in Battle Creek. Uh, it's a 420 uh, weed sponsor or, you know, inspired show. And then on the 27th, I have a show in Grand Rapids. Oh. And then in May, I'll be headed up to the UP of Michigan for a casino uh, show up there. But you can see all my dates. What, ca and, what casino? Uh, it's called the uh, Island Resort and Casino. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. 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 Done it many yeah. times. So um, going up there again, it's a fun one. It's really fun. I'm glad to be going up in the summer so I can actually play golf. Uh, oh. yeah. I usually go up there in the winter. Oh, you play golf? Uh, I, I, I pay to go out on the course. I don't know if you can qualify it as actually playing. I drive the <laughs> beer cart. Like you, nobody else. Yeah, that's a it's a oh, yeah. it's an important thing to have. It uh, is, of course, it's integral. It's I like know how to avoid the balls. balls when I see them. Yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. But uh, I'm hoping that uh, towards the end of the summer, uh, when we're a little better shape, I can do some some longer range traveling. Though, oh, so. good deal. Excited yeah, to get sure. back out there, like all of us. Yeah, me and Luis are actually planning a tour at the end of summer. We're gonna go on the road for for probably a month and uh, go down into Florida. Florida, we're coming back. Yep, there North we Carolina. Are. Uh, where? North Carolina. Oh, yeah, North, Car North Carolina. Definitely coming back. Yeah. Uh, we had a good time there a couple of years ago. Yeah, that was a good show. Yeah, that was a good show. I've yeah. heard it's fun. I'd like to get down there, too. Actually. Yeah, well, I think you're scheduled. I saw somewhere in, that you were scheduled to go down there with uh, traveling with somebody, but I can't remember exactly who it is, but I know it's on the calendar for for like January, February of next year. Yeah, yeah. Because you know, they booked uh, that way out. Way in yeah, advance, yeah. yeah. For sure, yeah. Uh, uh, and that'll be on my website with the rest of the day. Yeah, that's actually sure, a TDC yeah. comedy. Uh, 
Oh yeah. Production okay. There, so yeah. so you know a guy is what you're yeah, saying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know a guy. All right. Or a girl. Or a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very yeah, nice lady in that. fact. Yeah. But um, we want to say hello to uh, to our fans in Mississippi too. Down there and also Panama City, Florida. You know, I want to give a shout out to them too. Um, anyone you want to say hi to? Uh, hi, mom. Uh, <laughs> I, mean, which, I always, I never got a chance to do that, right? Which is not necessarily your real mom, but no, it's no, your mom. you know, I mean, if either yeah. one that's out there, honestly, watching at this point, I guess uh, cover. You know, my you, face. <laughs> you know, you know, it's so bad. That woman took you in, and him, and they did you right. Mm-hmm. And as far as I'm concerned, see, I've always been one of these type because I've been a stepfather. And I look at it this way. That's your mom and dad. Oh, for sure. Like my step, I had a stepfather. And he just recently passed, but he, uh, he's the one that taught me how to ride a bicycle, mm-hmm. throw a football, mm-hmm. also how to cut grass, mm-hmm. you know, how to work my ass off, you know, that nothing's going to be handed to you. Mm-hmm. He's yeah. the one that taught me all that stuff, sure. how to work wood and do, you know, do stuff, you know, and I just look at it as, you know, that was dad. Yeah. You know, the guy who, uh, you know, I met when I was 16, 17, who was with yeah. my mom at how I got here. Mm-hmm. I called him father, you know, because he fathered me. Sure. That's all he did. So yours, I mean, those are your parents. And they right? are. And, you know, it's, it's, they, they. Wouldn't you expect anyone meeting them to give them the same respect? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, as, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and they know I joke about it. They, you know, uh, I, like I said, I was only three months old, so it's, right. it's all I've ever known. Right. And, yeah, everything, I, every pers- everything about who I am as a person is because of those two wonderful parents. Hey, so, at absolutely. least your dad didn't get, um, your dad didn't get uh, deported. No, no, he did not. Yeah. Uh, at least you got uh, that going for yeah, you. That's, uh, yeah, that's, I said, I mean, not, not the one that I know any of me. I mean, uh, who knows? There you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're going to get to meet them. Yes. You know that. Uh, I no, I, you are. Oh, is that, I can tell you. I didn't know. Are they my, backstage? I didn't know. <laughs> I, I didn't know my. I didn't know. I didn't know my biological father. Yeah. I didn't know him till I was 16 years old. Hmm. Okay, and I tracked him down. Yeah. But you, you're in the perfect position, because once you do your HBO or your Netflix yeah, or right. anything like that. They're gonna, They're gonna find, find me. You. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Hey, there's my yes. boy. There's yes. gonna be. Yeah. There's gonna be a, a call to the stadium. That's uh, and it's gonna go. Is this Will call? Can you please get a message to my son? Yeah. He's there tonight. I don't know something's up because my mom would never care. His that name much. is John Hauser, right. but that's not his real name. He was a Larry. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the funny thing about that, actually, I asked my mom what the birth certificate situation was, because my birth certificate says Jonathan Daniel Hauser, which is oh, obviously yeah. the name that they gave me. Oh, that was when it. the adoption was done. Yeah. So for, but I was three months old at that point, so I asked them, I said, well, what was my name or what was on my birth certificate for that three months, thinking it was like just John Smith or something, because they knew I was put up for adoption. Right. And my mom just looked at me straight in the face and goes, no, they just left it blank. I'm like, for three months? Man, so in, you were baby nobody? I was baby nobody. Like, they had five pounds, <laughs> nine ounces red. That's all that they had. Well, John, me. you're doing great then, because that means you started off as a nobody. Yeah, you started off as a bottom. Yeah, I, like, I was a kid with no yeah. name. <laughs> so, Ooh, sounds like a song. And that right? sounds familiar. Went through the desert on a ginger with no name. With no name. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why would you be in the desert, though, man? You yeah, that'd be the worst place. Maybe, like, through the tundra on a ginger or something like that. Desert's not I went over the bridge. Bridge, mm. the, the Mackinac Bridge, with a uh, guy with no name. Yeah, mm. yeah. But so legally, you could use no name. I, I mean, I was legally for three right. months. No, yeah. name. I had used you, it. You still keep it. <laughs> yeah, I know. You right? Still keep it because somewhere yeah. the government's got it. Locked. As soon as they try to sue me, be like, no, I'm actually nobody. nobody. I have the proof. Yeah. No name. <laughs> that's it. It's good to know. Yeah. That, that's funny though. Great. You know? I was shocked. I mean, and this was only a couple years ago. I found out. Like, I'm still learning stuff that I never knew. Now, do you get along with your sisters? Uh, yeah, just the one. Yeah, I do. Uh, just, yeah, I, do. I mean, yeah, as, be- as well as most brothers and sisters do. Yeah. Uh, she's older? Yeah, she's four years older. Uh, she's got uh, three kids, so I'm also a godfather. So she's how old? 44? So she just turned 47. 47. Uh, 43, she just turned 47. Four, four, mm-hmm. 47. Mm-hmm. And her name? Uh, her name is Jenna. Jenna? Yes. Jenna! And, 
she was actually partially responsible for some of the photos as well. So I have a oh, score, yeah, to, the I have a score to settle for sure. So I don't mind saying her name on TV oh, yeah. at all. We can, while Man. you're talking about it, I mean. Time's running out. I guess right. w while we were talking about it, we can bring up, we got a couple photos. Hey, we, oh, we got a couple well, photos yeah. we want to yeah, we, we show. Um, can uh, Whitney, can you, <laughs> there we go. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my! That must have been when you found out what your name yeah. was. Yeah, that must have been at the mall center, right? Uh, yeah. At the mall. Clearly, I had trust issues uh, from from the start. Being look adopted. at Santa. Yeah. yeah. Santa, Santa, Santa. Now Why my, does he look so ominous? Like he doesn't even look like a happy Santa. Like, that's he, it. He's. It he's looks like, like when he's you, glad he made me cry. <laughs> yeah, he does not look. I don't want to sit on his well, lap either. I don't blame you for that. I probably did. Well, yeah. and my sister is actually in this photo <laughs> too, but we cut her out. She's just sitting there with a glorious Go smile. Go to the next one. Man. Let's see that next one Louise found. Oh, there you there's go. There's that ginger that's hair. Just, that's just, yeah, you can see that red hair in there. You see the transition yeah. oh, that happened. Yeah, you it's know? crazy. And you still hey, kind of, look, you look, look like you. you know? I do, I know. And, and right? you covered the forehead. I know, I yeah. had, like, I didn't have a forehead yeah. at, at that time. It's And uh, here's the one we really want to ask you some questions about. Oh, here we go. Yeah, this is messed up. <laughs> Did you? Were you? Was there a gender? Was no. there a, a, a gender uh, Well, my I mean, sister was a ballet dancer. Let me throw that out there. So that's and a hand me down your wing? That's it, I guess. And you decided yeah. <laughs> I decided Man. it might look better on me. Yeah. Now, there's two things I realized about are this your, photo. Are your parents at home when this yeah. happened? No, we came, I came downstairs to show them this. That's why they got the photo. Oh, like, man. I, I went they took a picture. That's child abuse, man. You can't I did be. it to myself. Somebody, <laughs> somebody wanted to be the big sister. Yeah. I did, I, well, and then I, <sighs> there's two things I know now because of that photo. I know that uh, either A, I can't blame alcohol for all my bad decisions because I was only eight there, or B, I was an alcoholic for a lot longer than I'm able to admit right. <laughs> because I have no experience. Well, hell, John, we're glad you came by, man. Thank appreciate you. it. Definitely appreciate it. We'll yeah. have a lot of to fun. have you back on the show. I would love yeah. to. I would absolutely um, love to. Once again, we want to remember uh, Russ Brown. Absolutely. Our uh, defender appreciate of First Amendment, freedom of speech. And uh, we want to thank you for tuning in. And please go to our website and uh, check it out. All kinds of new stuff coming up on it and all. Because I finally got enough money to pay the lady to, who takes care of the website. So we got a budget now. We got a budget. So go by and uh, take a look at that. Let us know what you think and keep tuning in. It shows every month. And uh, listen, it's all about the freedom of speech, people. It's our right to say whatever you want to anybody. But remember, when you say something to anybody, they have the right to say something back to you, whether it's good or bad. Yeah. And remember. It's always better if it's funny. When he comes to your town. He's not fooling around. And when he comes around, he'll get rid of your frown. He's the disgruntled clown.